right. Hey, everyone. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Karen with the Rugger's Edge. I'm really excited to host this webinar this evening to highlight a couple of the new uh, men's varsity programs that are happening in the U.S. I think it's really exciting to start seeing um, so many new programs popping up. And often a question I get um, from families is about, um, you know, what, what these programs are about. What are these schools like, especially if, if they're in areas that they've never been. So, you know, what better way than to hear directly from the coaches a little bit more about their programs. Um, so with that in mind, we're going to hop in. Um, I mentioned we originally were going to do this um, with Coach Lance from Aquinas. He had a family emergency, so it'll just be the three of us. Um, but it's still going to be fun and informational. So I'm glad that you're here. Um, so first off, uh, maybe I'll just have, uh, Brian, we'll start with you and then we'll go to you, Benny, if you want to at least just introduce yourself and your background, um, and then we'll get into your programs. So first, maybe just a little bit of how you got into rugby and then um, kind of your experience with coaching. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Brian Colbridge. Um, I've been involved in rugby for over 30 years now. I uh, first started playing when I we nipper. My dad was my rugby coach, um, which is a good thing and a bad thing. I'm sure some people can uh, attest to that. But yeah, uh, I come from a rugby family, grew up in England, playing rugby all through school and college and playing uh, club levels and regional stuff as well. And then moved to New Zealand there in my, in my 20s and moved more into the coaching side of things. Um, played a little bit, but I just found that, you know, coaching um, fit in with my pathway as a high school teacher better than playing did um and yeah I just kind of went from there and moved to the U.S. um five years ago and moved to Memphis which is where I'm at now coached uh with the Memphis inner city rugby uh boys teams girls teams men's teams women's teams was involved with the University of Memphis a little bit and then uh Christian Brothers started their program and announced it and uh, they hit me up and said, you know, we'd love for you to come along and, and help steer the ship. So I'm now the head coach of the men's and the women's programs over at CBU. And thankfully, I've got a wife who's also a rugby player and very understanding. And uh, My son uh, is probably going to be a rugby player, too. He's only two, but we, we put a ball in front of him. <laughs> and we said, you know, if he if he picks it up, he's going to play rugby. And if he kicks it, well, he's going to play fly half. So that's how that works out. <laughs> um, yeah. Good to, sure. good to see everybody, and thanks for taking the time out to, to come along to this. Great, great. And then, Coach Benny, what about you? Oh, um, my name is Benny Matilona. Karen, thanks for having me, Brian. It's great to see you again. Uh, my name is Benny Matilona. I'm originally from Sacramento, California. Uh, played under Salty for uh, X amount of years with the uh, U19s national team and um, kind of had, you know, the background from my family playing playing rugby it was either football or rugby and I chose rugby I was better at it <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, ended up uh, you know being coached under Salty and you know took the route to Life University played there for uh, I took the six-year route um, <laughs> at Life University uh, and you know just being coached under Scott Lawrence and um, going into the um, USA rugby performance pathway from high school All-Americans to collegiate All-Americans and being into the USA men's national pool. Um, really couldn't cut it at the time. Uh, so I ended up taking the next best option, which was coaching and uh, took a six year hiatus. And my wife, I met at Life University, we moved up here to Michigan. <clears throat> wonderful, wonderful state, uh, full of snow and it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, Kind of took the uh, wanted to come back into rugby, so I, I tried out for the New England Free Jacks MLR team. Uh, they offered the practice squad, uh, the money, and the timing and the location just wasn't right. So I stuck to the coaching full time and coached with Brandon Sparks at Legacy Rugby Academy, helped start the Detroit Catholic Central Rugby Program, uh, 2017, and currently at Adrian College. And they wanted to start the program, and we kicked it off last year during the pandemic, actually in November. Wow. 2020 and dropped my name in the hat and you know got got lucky and got the job so you know, here we are awesome that's so exciting I mean I, I love that both of you have such a like an interesting pathway to coaching but clearly it's something that you're passionate about and I think um, one of the things I tell students all the time is you know in in searching for 
for colleges and, and the fit, right? A big part of it is, is how they mesh with the coach. You know, that's who they're going to be working with um, and making sure that it's a good fit. Um, can you tell me a little bit about your school? So before we even get into the rugby stuff, um, is there anything, um, and Benny, we'll, we'll just start with you, then we'll just kind of keep going back and forth. Um, can you tell us a little bit about Adrian College? Like I've unfortunately never been there. I, I now hear that might be a little bit chilly in the winter, although it's starting to get cold here in Colorado too. Um, but, you know, for those, um, you know, we've got some students here from Texas, from Maryland. Uh, I know some students, um, you know, a lot of the rugby players I work with are from, you know, California, from the West Coast, um, kind of that mid-Atlantic area. Um, you know, so they may not have even thought about a school in your area. So can you tell me a little bit more about like your school, maybe what the school is known for or kind of the vibe now that you've been there a little bit? Um, yeah, just kind of give us a little rundown about that. So Adrian College is based in Adrian, Michigan. We're about 30 minutes south of Ann Arbor, okay. 30 minutes north of Toledo, Ohio. Uh, we're a liberal arts uh, school, a uh, private school with 1,800 students and the only athletic program in the country with 52 sports wow. on campus. Yeah, and we're all considered varsity programs as well. So uh, that's something that, you know, Adrian College is known for. And when they start a program, they do it right from the ground up. Um, and that's that's what uh, um, Adrian College is known for. And, you know, the, it's, it's great to have the president as well as vice president and all the donors just buy into every program that's that's ever started here at Adrian College. What, would you say the town, is it fairly, is it rural? Is it suburban? Is it, uh, you know, like what, what's, you know, um, for, for, like, like, little, like what you know, student would like it there? What student would, it, you know what I mean? Well, I can tell you if you're, uh, if you're all right with uh, cornfields and a um, little bit of a suburban vibe to it, uh, that's, that's what you can consider, okay. uh, Adrian, uh, the city. We're blue. We're blue collar town, so um, you'll see a lot of working class here that's involved here in Adrian, Michigan. So we're, we're not too far from a lot of the major cities. So Jackson, uh, Jackson, Michigan is about 40 minutes. Uh, we're only about two hours away from Grand Rapids, hour and a half from Detroit, but we're really on the southeast of Michigan. Okay. Very cool. And so for the students who don't know, I mean, liberal arts, um, you know, tends to be um, you know, it's not pre-professional, so you don't normally have, um, you know, majors that are like engineering, but a lot of it is um, the liberal arts have a lot of return on making sure that students um, are critical thinkers and can apply a lot of their skills to many other, um, you know, whatever industries that they decide to move forward with, you know, if they want to go to grad school and those sorts of things, um, you know, don't be scared off by liberal arts. I think a lot of students, if they don't know enough about it, and I would urge you to research more, um, you know, that that it can still prepare you for whatever career that you're looking for. Um, perfect. Um, and then, Brian, what about you? Can you tell me a little bit about CVU? Yeah, so uh, Christian Brothers University is based here in Memphis. Um, lots of great weather. We, we're not too uh, rough on the cold there. Ben, Benny's got his jacket on and his inside, so you know he's serious about it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, we're, we're a good good place. Uh, it's a small private school uh, with Lasallian values. Um, I think sometimes people get a little confused and think it's going to be um, really kind of uh, heavy on the religion side, but it, it kind of more picks up on the, the values-based uh, philosophies from the LaSallean kind of pathway there. Um, we've got about 1,600 students. Uh, we've got men's and women's uh, rugby. Um, our athletic department is super supportive um, of what's going on, and uh, they want to see rugby become one of the flagship programs mm -hmm. of, the, of the whole athletics department, and we're starting on the ground floor and trying to get the right people in the right spots uh, for the program there. Um, in terms of what it's known for, historically, it's just been a very heavy um, academically focused school. Um, you know, we've got a really good STEM program. We've got a nursing program. We've got all the, you know, the pre-meds, pre-laws, pre-dentistry and, and those things going on. Um, and we've got a great um, track record for immediate employment upon graduation, which is something that a lot of students really appreciate hearing uh, because, you know, I have to invest in a lot of time and, and financial resources into going to college to make sure there's, you know, a light at the end of the tunnel. And, and we're pretty proud on, on how we do with that. 
Great. Can you, um, I don't know whoever wants to start this, um, you know, one of the questions I get all the time is, you know, what, what does the recruitment process look like? And maybe it's a little bit different because both of yours are fairly new. Um, so let's say, you know, we've got students on here that are juniors. Okay, so they're grade 11. Um, what, you know, if you could, you know, and, and I don't know if you want to start, Brian, but like, what, what would the process look like for you for a junior? Um, and then actually, I, I would also, you know, just to kind of throw it out there, are both of your programs still recruiting for, for seniors? So class of 22. Yeah, okay, so perfect. we're we're open enrollment. So uh, we're good on seniors. We're good on juniors. Uh, we, we want people trying to get in touch early um, because we're a new program and we can offer some scholarships. We have a lot of uh, people interested in funding from external and it's always good to know uh, okay, who we got in the candidate pool that we're that we're able to assist, and knowing those things early is definitely better than you know trying to whip around some money or some external funding um, at the last minute. So um, you know, getting in touch early is a really good thing. It also it pr provides a lot of clarity around what students need to do in terms of uh, academics and uh, what qualifications they would need to get certain scholarships available to them. Um, you know, you want to. You want to know that as early as possible. That, that's how I think. Coming from a, uh, a foreign country where I was educated at the high level, um, you know, the whole process of university over here was very different to me and eye-opening. And so I would just tell everybody, whether it's CBU or, or almost any school, you know, you want to be really thinking about it early, getting in touch early. So when you say get in touch, uh, sorry, when you say get in touch early, do they email you directly? Do you want them yep. to do like a recruit form? Like what is the best way for you? And I see Benny shaking his head. So he's probably on the same boat of like getting in touch early. Um, you know, is there, if you can share yeah. like, because a lot of students are like, what does that mean? Right? Like when they say get, do they text you? You know what I mean? Like what, what, what yeah, would yeah, sure. what'd be the way you would prefer students to start getting in touch with you? So they can email me directly. Um, and I can, I can share an email here later on. Um, but yep, and I'll, a, I'll share it. I'll, I'll share all of your information to the perfect. attendees as well as um, on on the online content page, which is where this session will be posted as well. Perfect. And then we've got a recruitment questionnaire as well, which you know asks for some of those questions around your academics and your sporting history, uh, whether you played multiple sports and, and those kinds of things as well. And that comes directly to me anyway. So if okay. if students. Know, don't have my direct contact that will just come straight through to me and, and i run with it from there okay benny is that same same for you yeah it's pretty much the same process we're also open um enrollment as well and we we want to make sure that you know that like let's get in contact early that way we can get the paperwork done early as often and you can get as much money as you possibly can through the whole recruiting process as well so you know that's the the idea is to find the young man that's uh, responsible and goal-oriented on and off the field uh, to make sure that they fit our program early on instead of finding out you know about two three months which i have some guys uh have reached out pretty late but they fit in properly but that's that's not what we want we want to make sure the process is smooth as possible and we get a lot of direct messages through social media because apparently that's the new thing nowadays is is for coaches and players to reach out through either our facebook page or our instagram page so you know we we go through the whole process of we have our a recruitment questionnaire that they can fill out um with also we're also with the gpa um our 2.7 is actually our we start at 2.7 that way they can get uh, academic scholarship right off the bat um okay. for further tuition so um, we are test optional for our um sats as well Right. Do you have a GPA uh, like minimum or anything like that that you're looking for, Brian? Yeah. So I mean, we we have a combination matrix of ACTs slash SATs and GPAs. Um, and you know, if you're getting above a 18 on your ACT and you're getting a 2.5 plus on your GPA, you're going to get some scholarship money. And if you get below that, like I still encourage people to um, apply because. They, they will just go through a review process. And if you've got something additional on your resume that, you know, maybe you've done some volunteering or something like that that just makes you stand out, 
you know, there's uh, there's a little wiggle room in it too. And, and we, we give everybody some merit-based scholarship, no matter where they're at, as long as, um, you know, they get approved through the application process. Is, um, is film a big part of recruiting right now for, for both of you? Or are you hoping to get to like, tournaments or get like or you know like what what is what is the evaluation of a student look like from an athletic point of view film is also is, is always a plus when it comes to the recruiting process um yeah it, you know they, they always have the highlight films and they always show the best but we also want to see you know that we're not perfect uh, by any means so we also want to see um, recommendations from coaches and players and, and teachers as well. So those are things that I look for as well. Does a is a student athlete? Does he fit our program? Is he does he have great character on and off the field? That's that's the most important thing for me that I that I really look for um, in a student athlete because you know we we are driven in our our culture and what we want to become for the next four or five years is you know we don't want that I'd say that the New Zealand All Blacks type mentality where you know, if you're all all about the program and and um, creating leaders within our programs to help drive our culture, that's that's really what it's about. Because it's not about me as a coach; it's about the the program and the students, and they're the ones who help drive this program. But helping them guide guide them in the right direction. Um, is there and, and and Brian? I don't know if you want to take this this question too, but like, okay, so let's say you're watching film because I get this question all the time too. Like, what what should they put in the film? Um, you just mentioned like you like the highlights, but you know, are, are there certain traits or certain things you are like really looking for? You're like, oh my gosh, that's the kind of skill we really need. Um, is there anything particular that you're looking for either right now or in general, anything that stands out to you? Yeah, I mean, there's a few things that I generally look for. Um, you know, obviously the highlight reels, just as Benny alluded to, is, you know, it, it shows the very best. But I like having, um, you know, full games, um, especially in a, a close game or maybe one you're down by a few points. Um, that way we get to see some character, see if there's some leadership and positivity there. Because obviously, you know, and, and, and Benny touched upon this earlier as well. It's like culture is the main thing in your team. You know, we can we can train you to get a better catch pass quicker than we can turn you around as you know if mm. you've got a negative mindset and you're trying to pull the team down so you know for me it's things like that you know who's who's rallying boys or the, the girls around and trying to boost the performance and, and who's kind of uh, you know packing a sad on there with that uh, but also like just in terms of general play the number one thing I look at is you know if you if you've made a tackle are you, are you laying on the ground afterwards? Are you having a cup of tea or are you getting back straight in the line ready for the next thing? So that kind of, you know, that work rate is the number one thing that I look for. Okay. Betty, any spe special skills, positions, anything right now that, that you're looking for? Brian, same question to you too. Are there certain positions that you feel like are, would be really valuable to you or are you just kind of open to anything? Oh man, I, that's just, you know, the beauty of the question. game game I guess it's no it's just more of you know sometimes I do look for a, a specialization in a certain position to, to help you know fill our voids in our, our attack or our defense but most of all it's you know are they willing to play different positions you know when they come here or okay. are you that type of person that's you know I strictly play this position and only this position so that's, you know, that just tells me right off the bat that he's not a team player hmm. he's all about himself yeah, I think it's it's one of those things, isn't it? When, especially with the nature of college rugby, or you know, even club rugby to a certain extent, you got to make the jigsaw fit. Like you might not have the right shapes and uh, and pieces, but you got to make it work on game day. And you know, there's so much crossover with positions. Um, you know, there's definitely like uniques, uh, unique nuances with them. But you know, once that ball's out of the scrum or out of the line out man, you're, you're all rugby players. So, <laughs> you know, having, having guys that are willing to, especially if it's like a neighbor in position, you know, um, you can, you can move a position or two to the left or right of, of your Jersey number pretty, pretty comfortably. You know, you look at guys like Faf de Klerk or Anton Dupont who both play like nine and 10 regularly. You look at guys like Jordy Barrett, who's won every number from 10 through 15 over the last couple of years, Dane Coles, who, who could probably wear one through 15 and do a pretty good job of it. You know, there's, there's definitely a lot more uh, flexibility in the, in the modern game. 
Great. Um, what, what would you all recommend for these high school players that are on right now, right? They, they, they're playing good high school rugby, but they're like, I know I want to play at the next level and I would love to play for a varsity sport. Is there anything you would recommend they do now to prepare them for that next level? What are some things they can start doing either physically, mentally, you know, what are some, what's some advice you might give them? Go ahead, Brian, I'll, I'll go ahead. You, you can take this one oh, first. Okay. <laughs> um, so I think the first thing uh, has nothing to do with the sport and stuff and it's just get on your academics. That's the number one thing, you know, um, you want to be a well-rounded individual and that starts with some of the things you do in off the field. Uh, in terms of things that you can do to better prepare for on the field, uh, the number one thing that I see and coming from England and then New Zealand, uh, where it's at a whole different level, and then coming to America is the number one issue I find is uh, the speed of thought. So putting yourself into positions where you got to make quick decisions um, under pressure as much as possible is what I would say. You know, anybody can look good when they're running on a post, you know, even uh, even me, the, you know, nearly <laughs> 40 years old. But like when you're under pressure, can you still do the, you know, the fundamental skills and, and really just work? Work, work really hard at being extraordinary at the ordinary. You know, there's a lot of people that don't necessarily put the right time into just just their catch pass and just putting that extra effort into it. It just opens up the field and it, everything. You you focus on your decision making under pressure and your fundamental skills, and the game just slows down and um, it's almost like you've got some kind of magic power or something. <laughs> Coach Benny, yeah. what, what do you think? And with me, it's, um, you know, I, I think they should be playing multi-sports um, mm -hmm. as an athlete, too, because um, I think it helps with, you know, all, all kinds with, with coordination patterns and it helps build fitness in many different ways. Um, but the, the important thing for me is um, master your fundamentals as much as you can, because when you come into the college program, I think it's just another step up, right? So it's more of if you build a platform now um, in your high school program, it'll be a lot bit easier for us to implement a lot of our attack system and our defense system, right? Because it's, you know, that's part of the game is, is you're mastering your fundamentals, your catch and pass, uh, your wrecking ability, as well as your one-on-one -on -one tackling or tracking. Um, that's that's a big, big one for me. Yeah. Um, well, one of the things that I, I tell a lot of high school students too, and it kind of goes along with what um, Brian was mentioning, but something that I would recommend high school students start getting ready for is the time management piece. Um, so being able to manage yourself and not having mom or dad do that part of like what what papers are due, but when is practice, when are games, all that kind of stuff. Um, just starting to, to be responsible for that piece and being accountable and not relying on someone else to do it. Because I'm assuming, you know, when they're there, they're in charge of themselves. And, and along that same track, can you, um, and maybe whoever wants to take it, but what would a typical day or a typical week look like for a student athlete um, in your program? Um, you know, there's certainly some that are really, really, you know, like the time commitments really heavy, some are much lighter. Like if you can maybe walk some students through what it would be like to be a student athlete in your program, I think that would help some students start to really picture, um, you know, if, if that's a good fit for them. Um, I don't know, so I don't know who wants to go first. Who's, who's ready? Oh, I'll, I'll go. Keep going, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, so for us, for a typical day, like we, we kind of train almost you know, four, four times a day during the week. And that depends if we have a match on Saturday. So our typical day on Monday would look, um, the guys would get up early in the morning for class. They would go to class from about 8 a.m. all the way till 2 p.m. usually ends. Um, they'll have their lunch. They'll go to their lunch. They'll hang out with the boys. Uh, they'll come to our meetings, our PTM meetings, which start at 4 p.m. Um, and then we would head out straight to Docking Stadium for training for about 4.30 to 6 p.m. So we go roughly for about hour and a half um, to, with, with, uh, with training. So we try not to overdo it when we periodize during our week of our training sessions just to make sure that you know, our athletes are, if, if you know anything about the periodization, we try not to overtrain them or undertrain them, but trying to hit that sweet spot. Um, with due to... Uh, 52 sports on campus. We're limited on our time in the weight room. So our time slots at 7 p.m. So immediately after training, the guys will fuel up, change, go straight into throwing their shirts and their laundry loop, uh, throwing in the basket, and then they'll head straight out 
to the weight room and we'll have our performance. Uh, Mark, Mark Phillips, our assistant coach and backs coach, will, will take the strength training from there. Uh, once they're done, they'll grab a snack, fuel up immediately after, and then head straight to their to their dorms and actually start preparing for the next day. So they'll either go get dinner together or they'll get extra time studying and hopefully talking about that because I'm glad you brought that up is the time management that a lot of my players or most of my players have have an issue with. So that's what a that's what a typical day mm. looks like. So a lot of our training sessions we we overload during the during the end of the day. Mm. Great. That's great. I mean it's it's just nice to hear um, I have a lot of students that will say, oh, I want to play on a varsity level team, you know, and then you hear like, it's, it's awesome, right? You have some great experiences and you, you have the access to coaching and stuff that you wouldn't have, like maybe on a club program, but you've got to put the work in, you know, there's definitely some dedication required and a lot of hard work. So that's awesome for, for that bit of a rundown. Brian, what about you? Yeah, it's, it's pretty funny hearing Benny talk about his program because it, it almost sounded like I was saying, the exact same thing in my mind, like, yeah, we, we go from 4.30 till 6, you know, we, it's exactly the same time and everything. Um, but basically, because we've got a men's and women's program, we, we kind of split the week up. So um, we do three sessions a week. Um, and then there's, you know, a study hall as well for, for the players. Um, and they, they do it separately, obviously. Um, and the study hall comprises of Know, making sure that everybody's holding each other accountable for their grades, helping each other out. We've kind of really built an environment of, you know, uh, we, we borrowed it from the spring box, but, you know, stronger together. And it's like, that's on the field, it's off the field. You know, if somebody's struggling in math, one of the guys who's good at math is going to, you know, help mentor them and, you know, get that kind of going. And then uh, usually part of the study hall as well involves like watching some film. Um, we had a captain's run as well so we're trying to empower players like hey you know just because the coach isn't around doesn't mean you can't be still learning or reinforcing your learning so you know we, we go three sessions a week uh, with coaches and then one session without the coaches um you know i've heard of some programs getting up at you know 4 a.m for waste room sessions and we're, we're not about that you got to set yourself up for success in the classroom and oftentimes you know some people are really good at getting up really early, which is definitely something I've learned having a having a baby. Um, <laughs> no, but some people are, are not so good. Um, I, I won't say that my wife is one of those people because she'll end up <laughs> killing me. But, you know, some people really work good at, in the gym early in the morning and some people don't. So we just kind of had that mindset early on of, you know what, if you want to go and work out early in the morning, you can do, but we're not going to do any kind of mandatory sessions. Um, you know, we want you to do the business uh, in the classroom. And so uh, we, we were trying to build up a whole kind of uh, culture of players wanting to go and work out. And so we've got these little mini units working out together and challenging each other, which is really good for the collectiveness and cohesion uh, on the field as well. And so that's kind of how we run that. Um, we've got an on-site trainer as well, which is really good for anybody needing some prehab or rehab. Um, Cause that's one of the biggest things that I found moving up in my career is a lot of the things you do in the gym or even things like yoga, you know, it's, it's about prehabbing to, to avoid injury. You know, um, I always, always kind of looked at it like yoga, Who, who's doing yoga. But I remember Martin Anon him talking about like, he's able to play at 38 years old at the highest level because of yoga. And I was like, mm. well, I was good enough for him. It's good enough for me. Um, <laughs> You know, so that's kind of how we run it. And then obviously, you know, games on, on Saturdays. Can you, um, Benny, can you um, explain what, is there a conference you're in? Is there a division you're in? Um, I know that obviously with USA Rugby, there's a lot of restructuring and there's all these different conferences now, which is a whole other thing that I do a whole other session about. Um, but I think some students and families at least are aware of some of them. So if you can share... Um, so I'll start with you. Like, what? Who do you normally play? Like, what does your conference look like? Um, if you can explain that. Yeah. So since we are a first year program, uh, we are in the Great Lakes Conference. We're currently in Division Two. Um, we actually scheduled a lot of D1 programs right off the bat. So we front loaded our schedule from uh, U of M, hmm. University of Michigan, uh, Michigan State, uh, Notre Dame, JV. Uh, and then we played teams like uh, Grand Valley State, Central Michigan, 
uh, Oakland University, uh, mm-hmm. Saginaw Valley State. So a lot of the NCAA Division II programs, we were, were in that conference. But since we are NCAA Division III, um, there is no Division III. It's, it's yeah. either NCR. So um, we actually jumped up to D2. Next year, uh, we will be jumping up to D1 AA. Oh, great. Um, and, yeah, NCR actually moved us up before we even started our season, I, which oh. I, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so right. that's that's currently okay. where we're at. Um, we have our playoffs um, for the Sweet 16s in Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, this weekend, Friday. Oh, so. exciting! So, um, so folks that are watching this, right, they they'd be able to. I think they're going to stream them, right? So they might be able um, to watch. Maybe I, I hope so. Um, if not, we'll we'll record it. We'll, I'm sure we'll post oh, great. Some, highlights, some highlights on there. So our first match is against UNC Charlotte and. Winner of that plays um, either Illinois State or uh, whew, sorry, Illinois State or UMass Lowell. Okay. Or Lowell. Great. Well, I mean, I, I'm sure I'll say it later, but good luck at this weekend. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, Brian, what what about um, CBU? What, where are you all playing? Yeah, so right now, um, because of COVID and just um, the nature of some of the things that were going on within mm-hmm. Memphis as a city uh, in terms of COVID uh, restrictions and things like that, we just decided to be independent this year, um, set up our own fixtures rather than scheduling a whole heap of matrix matches and then, you know, having to say, yeah, we can play or we can't play, you know, those kinds of things. It, it was just better to do, um, I felt, in terms of showing good character and good faith is, is setting up our own independent uh, schedule for this year. Uh, but next year we'll be joining in with the D2 um, Southern Conference Uh the University of Memphis down the street there in that one, uh, along with, you know, MTSU um, and then a couple teams from, you know, Georgia. And, um, you know, there's also a Division One version of it, which a lot of the teams uh, do some um, fixtures with as well, teams like UTK. Um, so that's, that's where we're going to be on the men's side with the women's side. Uh, similar situation, we'll be playing against teams like Tulane. Um, we're hoping that the University of... Um, Alabama are going to get their women's program back up. We've been playing against Lee. Um, I'm just kind of really working that kind of, you know, southeast uh, corner of the of the country and, and getting games as, as frequently as possible. Um, you know, we've got men's and women's teams in town as well. Um, and so we, we, we've got fixtures available for us, you know, at the, at the college level and also to try and just, you know, Put it up against, uh, you know, some senior teams as well, and you know, right. some women from over, uh, over the bridge here in Little Rock. Um, they came over and played some rugby with us, uh, against us, um, with CBU and with some of the women's teams. We've made like a combination team, and they've expressed massive interest in coming and going. Right when now you CBU's up and running for real. Let's uh, let's go full noise, and right. you know, so that's really good. That's one of the great things about just the rugby community is. You know, on top of having those regular fixtures, there's always going to be teams there ready to come and, and uh, have a crack. And, you know, it's one of those things where um, growing up, I was always playing, you know, 25 games a year. And then, you know, moving over to, to America, um, the men's team played like seven games. And I'm like, well, let's, let's try and crank this up a little bit because the more opportunities you get, the faster you're going to get better. You know? Yeah. So, so something is, Sorry. So, oh, no, 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 you're fine. I, I, one of the things I want students to think about too is, you know, so here, here are two programs that are currently Division Two, but Adrian might be moved or is moving up to D1AA. I think what students should be aware of and what I bring up all the time is that regardless of the, the division, um, there's still really competitive programs within each of those divisions, you know, and almost you can start with looking at that because obviously some students the first thing they're looking at is, oh, like I, I, I have to play D1A, but there's lots of club programs that are D1A that are actually not as strong as, uh, and don't have the support that a D1AA, a D2, or even a small college varsity program would have. So I think kind of hearing about um, what your system looks like and obviously having a full-time coach is really nice. You know, you don't have the, um, I'm not saying it's bad, but there's certainly a different experience of having a volunteer coach, someone who, you know, like 
they don't get, um, you know, a full day or week or whatever to plan out. What are your practices going to look like? What is the strategy against this upcoming team or this playoff, you know, and having that really kind of professional experience. Um, I think that's a really special thing that a lot of student athletes don't, don't get. So I think at your programs, I think they have the ability to do that. Um, I, I was going to quickly mention because um, Coach Lance did text me <laughs> to make sure just to um, let any students know if they, they were on here originally to, to learn about Aquinas. Um, they are also recruiting for class of 22. So if there are seniors watching um, similar to what um, you know, CBU and Adrian are talking about, you know, fill out that recruit questionnaire. That's the best way um, to get a hold of them as well as a starting point. Um, but they are, I think all three of you are kind of in that same boat of starting up that program unfortunately kind of in the middle of, of COVID. So now is probably the first time you're able to really actively recruit with like you know, seeing athletes who've played games, tournaments, things like that. So everyone's kind of in that same boat. Um, I wanted to start, um, you know, kind of getting into it, it you know, I, I know you just started kind of getting into this recruitment process, but are there a few common mistakes you've already seen or some things that you've you know, some students who have reached out to you that were kind of like mistakes that you're like, oh, I wish they didn't do that. Um, things you can share so that current students, they don't, they don't make those same mistakes. They don't fall in those same pitfalls. Is there anything off the top of your head you can think of? The number one thing that I would think is being a test optional school, and, and Benny, you might be in the same, same boat as me here, is if your GPA is really good and your ACT is not so good, just declare your GPA because the school can't unsee the ACT. So if you tell us, hey, you got a 16 ACT because you were just having like a really bad time but your GPA is off the charts, just be, be a little more selective <laughs> what you're sharing. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's better for you in terms of the scholarship money you're getting. And, um, and you know, like I said, the the school can't turn a blind eye to what it, what you've shown them. So, one hundred percent, I agree on that. And it's you know, it's just um, you, you gotta you're you're marketing yourself to to you know these not only us as a coach, but also to the academic sides and the admissions. So we want to make sure, yeah, you're selective on on the uh, test optional. Um, if you're great at testing, great. Um, but another thing I wanted to add. Um, is just please please be smart about what you post on social media. Um, there's actually quite a few kids that were on the brink of coming to Adrian College, and I really just had to go mute and just let them know what that that's not the type of athlete, student athlete that I'm looking for uh, on what they post. And I think that's hmm. uh, it's 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 really not what we're looking for to to bring in our program. So those I'd call that energy sappers. I'm sure you've heard that before, Brian. So it's you know, we want the guys that, you know, inject energy, not, not sap the energy. So that's, that's another, another advice from, from. Do, you, do you seek them out? Like once they've reached out to you, you're like, Oh, let me just see if they're on social media or do they like yes. send it and they think it's okay. <laughs> well, they, they it, it's both. So on the questionnaire, they'll ask if they have social media oh. accounts or handles and, and they'll put it on there and I'll, I'll check, like I'll, I'll add them. And I, I actually check to see what they post daily. Hmm. Uh, even my players, like though, they're like, coach, how'd you find my Snapchat? Oh, don't worry about it. I, I, I want to see what you're doing. I'm not going to say anything, but it tells me a lot huh. about who you are on closed doors. So, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm with you 100% on that. You know, at the end of the day, you're, uh, you're representing the school, you're representing mm -hmm. the program, you're representing your own family, you're representing yourself as a person. So, you know, put a, put a good, put a good face on it and, uh, and everything's peachy. Um, but you know, we don't, we don't want to get heavily invested in a, in a young, young adult and then, you know, kind of regret that decision further on down the line. So, you know, just making sure you're smart about what you're doing. And I mean, I mean, that goes for, for every walk of life. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're seeing people now getting pinged about things they did five years ago or 10 years ago, or you have to think of Pablo Matera. You know, the Argentina captain who was in a lot of hot water about things he said. And it's just like, you know, just be smart. Yeah. Um, I love that you brought that up. I think that you even mentioned in the very beginning that, that some of the recruiting has moved to social media and, and that sometimes is that first contact. So I think if there are students that are just starting off this process, um, 
there is that part where you have that, that public facing persona and they, you know, coaches only know what you're putting out there, you know? So if you don't want your grandma to know something, if you are not comfortable sharing this with every single person in your family, as well as coaches, you know, there is a saying that, um, there was a recruiter that I had, uh, met with years ago. And he said, you know, just make sure you have your second thoughts before, not after. So if there's a question of, should I put this out there? You probably shouldn't, you know, <laughs> um, that, oh, if you get that gut feeling, um, because almost exactly, uh, Brian, what you were just saying, coaches can't unsee it. I've had students, it wasn't their particular, like they weren't saying the racist thing, misogynistic thing, the really offensive something, they might just be resharing someone else, or they get accidentally tagged in a friend's post about partying or doing things that are really risky. And unfortunately, you're kind of pulled into it, you know, and then the coaches can't kind of unsee that. Um, so 100%, you know, it was an interesting one that I never thought of. I had a coach mention that um, they randomly because he, somehow like their emails get get um, pulled into like, if you use Venmo and you can see what students are using their Venmos for. I don't know if you ever thought about this, but students, oh, yeah, that's a great you point. can see what students are paying people for. Um, it was really, it was, I'm not saying like, oh my gosh, like now everyone's going to look there, but you, <laughs> you can see some stuff, you know, or wow, I didn't know that that's how you're spending your money or the way you're talking. And it, again, it just builds, it, it just is more stuff for coaches to see like, uh, but what you're saying, like who you are behind closed doors, right? Some students can be great in person and then the coach walks away and then it's all sorts of just kind of horrible stuff. <laughs> um, there was a thing that happened a couple of years ago um, with Harvard University, just with admission, they had created like a Facebook group for like class of, you know, whatever, class of, you know, 19s or something like that. Everyone who'd been accepted was in this group. Um, and students were in there just kind of saying stuff. And then they, people started sharing memes. And, and some of those ended up being pretty offensive. Well, Harvard, who had opened that group, saw who had said all those things and basically rescinded all the acceptances of those students. So, I mean, there can be some really big consequences. Either you don't get that recruitment spot, you get pulled from admission. I mean, and that's these are students that are planning to enroll. This is summer before they're supposed to go, and now, now they're not going. So I love that you brought that up. Um, we're kind of nearing the end of this, this session, so I guess I wanted to put it to the two of you. Are there any last thoughts um, for students that are considering your schools, your programs? It can be about anything in general, anything you want um, students to know about. So um, the first thing I'll say, and I'm sure this goes for, for Benny's program, I'm sure it goes for Lance's program too, is, you know, sometimes students want to go to, you know, the life or the Lindenwood that's got a long track record, a lot of history, you know, everything's set up and it takes a bit of bravery to take a chance on a program. But think about it in terms of this, instead of it being a risk, it's an opportunity and it's an opportunity to get a lot more attention from your coaches, which is going to lead to a lot more personal development. It's also going to lead to most likely a lot of game time you're not going to be sat on the second team's bench uh or just you know waiting a couple of years for your opportunity and things like that like getting in on the ground floor of new programs is a surefire way to get lots of um good experiences and to also leave a personal legacy behind mm. that's wonderful i'm glad you said that brian because um you you guys don't know this but uh i was actually i wouldn't say i'm me only. Uh, when Dan Payne was the head coach at Life University, uh, he actually helped start revamp the undergrad program, and I was actually part of that group with Colt Cariaga. So wow. I kind of, I kind of took the jump with Life University when Scott was there, and then when Dan took over, pretty much, you know, where where it is now, lights out from there. So um, I'd say do the same thing, right? You everyone's going to always follow down that same path, right? Create your own path, right? Lead this, be, be happy that you chose a different path because uh, later down the line, you can always look back and say, man, I was actually part of that program to help start and revamp. Look where it is now and look how great success it is. But, you know, you're right. Everyone wants to go to the life, the Linden Woods, but a lot of them really just don't cut out for that or, or at that top level. 
to be playing there. I say weigh all your options, um, especially for us at, at Adrian College. We don't offer athletic scholarships. We're all academic and needs-based uh, grants. So we can try and compete <laughs> with the offering with the D1, D1A guys, but, you know, eventually it's, you know, they're always going to outweigh uh, for a brand new, for a program that's already there compared to a brand new program. So I'm awesome. glad I, well, I, got, uh, I got two other, yeah, just a little yeah. best, real, real quick, because um, you touched upon this earlier, and I thought it was a great point about weighing up whether it's go to like a D2 program or a D1 program. And I'll just say this from personal firsthand knowledge, University of Memphis is down the street from us. Not that I'm trying to give them a plug, but, you know, they're a D2 side and they, in the last um, MLR recruiting class, had two players who, who got signed up, one for Dallas Jackals and one for Seattle, but he's now transferred to Houston. So, you know, if you're in the right spot and doing the right things, people will notice you. It, it, just because you got a D1 label on your jersey doesn't mean that you're going to, you know, get down that pathway easier um, is, is the first thing. And the second thing is, and again, this, this just applies to pretty much every educational institution you're looking at. And obviously I'm hoping you, you're looking at CBU, but for any of them, they, they have this thing called the sticker price. And don't be, don't be concerned about it. If you're thinking this school looks like a good fit for me, apply to it, apply to it with all, all your heart and, um, the schools will try and figure out the best way to make it feasible for you. I know, you know, from personal experience at CBU, we've got merit-based scholarships for the academics. We've got rugby scholarships and we've got external donors. Um, you know, we want people coming in, especially if they've got a, you know, seal of approval from, from some good people in the rugby community. And, um, you know, especially because we're building this thing from the ground floor, we're going to do everything we can to make it work for you. You know, it's just the way it is. Yeah. I think just to kind of wrap things up, kind of based on what you guys are saying, I think something that's really important for students to do is take a little bit of time to reflect on what kind of experience you want in college, you know, and, and it's really hard, but to separate yourself from your friends, your teammates, you know, if you're, all your friends are looking at University of Memphis, right, they're looking at maybe a larger college or they're looking at you know, life or something like that. Cause they're like, I want to play that top level rugby. And, and this varsity program has been around for years and years. And what's funny is I remember in the beginning, like you'd say life and everyone's like, I'd never heard of that. Now, you know, that it's a rugby powerhouse, but it's had time to build. Right. So your two programs right now and Aquinas as well is very much at that starting point, you know, 10 years ago, which is where life and Lyndon would both were sitting in that same spot. Um, so I think for students to think through what kind of experience do I want in college, um, how much support do I need as a student athlete, um, you know, and once you kind of get through that part, then you can figure out, do I want to sit the bench for a couple of years, maybe get a chance to play my senior year? Do I want to be part of a brand new program and start it from the ground up and be a part of building that legacy, right? And knowing that, like, I was a part of that when it was just starting out. Now look at it, you know, being able to look back. I'm sure it's amazing for you to look back and go, like this is where life was and it's so funny to think about the Scott Lawrence time and the Dan Payne time and you know now Colton it's like I, I remember seeing that um, that development so it's it's great that you are a part of that as well um, so I, I do want to make sure to have you know in case I haven't seen any questions um, from attendees I think you guys have answered all of them you guys have been wonderful um, so for the folks that did join um, I will be sending out a follow-up with um, all the coaches information um, as well as the links to the recruit form so if you are interested please you know as these coaches have already mentioned, Fill that out, get in touch with them earlier, um, you know, so we can start that process, start that conversation. Um, and then if you have any questions, you know, I'll, I'll, again, I'll include their emails as well so they can reach out to you. Um, both you coaches, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I really appreciate it. And I can't wait to see what your programs, um, you know, build, you know, in the next couple of years. And, and I'm happy to be, I'm, you know, like I'm kind of seeing this from the ground up too. So this is really exciting for me too. So thanks so much for your time. Thank thanks, Karen. Appreciate it. All right. Good night, everyone. Thanks for joining. Uh, Bye. Bye.